Hi, welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. Tell me, do you have a drool over tools? Have you seen this one? It's called the Panto Router, and a serious piece of kit it is. You can cut all sorts of joints on it, but there's a couple of downsides. Firstly, it takes a while to set up for each joint. It's really meant for production. And it's rather expensive. It costs considerably more than a fairly basic CNC machine. Hang on, that gives me an idea. More after this. Can you cut joints on a CNC machine? Well, yes you can. CNC machines are designed for working on large flat pieces of wood. However, if I cut a slot in the spoil board right through the table and fitted a jig underneath to hold wood, I could machine the end of pieces of wood. My CNC machine sits at the back of the garage because you don't need to be there while it's working. It's about a metre off the ground. This gives good access when you're bolting things down. Underneath is where I store scrap wood for use on this machine. However, all that is on a trolley which wheels easily out of the way. Thanks to this space underneath, I can end cut material up to one metre long. This concept I modestly call the Joint Master. It could be complex, it could have swinging angles and everything tilt. But for most joints, what you need is to hold a thing square and machine the end. And that's what I'm going to do. The parts required were cut from 18mm Baltic ply, as seen. The first step in the construction was to fit a number of 6mm inserts for the clamps. These are the screwing type for strength and a countersunk. They make a tight solid fit. Here I'm using the MFT to hold the parts in accurate alignment before drilling and screwing. frame after gluing and screwing now looks like this. Notice I've added a doubler. This will secure to the table. A final check for square. Yep, that looks good. The final part of this assembly is the fence made from a piece of hardwood. It's important to check that this is absolutely square or as close as you can get it. Any doubt and it could be installed after it's been fitted. It's very important to align the jig to the y-axis so that it meets exactly at both ends. This is done by using a large bit and feeler gauges having secured the fence at only one end. We peep for the other end of the guide.
keep doing this at both ends, tweaking, until you get the same reading. Then it's a matter of adding screws until the whole thing is rigid. I managed to get mine to within a couple of thou. The guide sticks up through to the underneath of the spoil board. Underneath the jig is firmly keyed to the sides and back of the table. And yes, I will in the fullest of time make better clamps. The first test cut of a tenon. And it is as accurate as I can measure with the vernier gauge. All that's left is to cut a slot in the spoil board to let the material through. And there it is in place, ready to go. When cutting with this vertical jig, the origin point will always be in the same place. So, you start off by doing a test cut and measuring it. That allows you to establish the work XY coordinates. Make a note of these and that's where you will always start in future. The z-axis of course you need to set every time depending on how, where you've put the work material. But that's normal and if you're cutting slots or mortises it doesn't do any harm to make them a couple of millimeters deeper anyway to leave room for the glue. An hour or two in your favorite CAD program and you can build a whole library of joints to choose from. Just pull them down when you need them. What sort of joints am I talking about? Well Everything from dowels to dovetails. But more of that next time. Bye for now.